for you. If God be for us, who can be against us? There is nobody, nothing can be against us. Amen. Jesus. Before um, I pass on for our de declaration of Psalm 91, I want us to think about our um, giving. We are a joyful giving church, right? As, as a church, we are joyful givers. We celebrate giving. I am so thankful to Pastor Covenant Fusion Church. Um, thank God I have never had to force anybody to give money in this church. And I never try to manipulate anybody. We here in the church, we educate you about giving. That's about it. That's about it. And the rest, let the Lord deal with us. Amen. Amen. But I'm here to en en encourage every one of us to know this fact. That anything that we are giving, anything that we are sowing, it is coming back into our lives. Anything you have sown. And I'm believing God for great harvest in our lives. I'm believing that. You know, give something to him that he may work with it. It is not that he is hungry for your dollar or two dollars. He doesn't need that for him to run his economy. Thank God he doesn't depend on our broken dollar. Amen? Amen. To run his kingdom, to run his economy. He doesn't care for our dollars and I'm thankful for that. Is this on? Okay. Uh, it seems like I'm ta talking twice. But anyway, thank God that he has done those things. He has put a system in place that continues to bless us. And I'm thankful that we as Covenant Fusion Church, we are continually blessing and blessing people. We are taking care of the needs. We are taking care of spiritual needs, mental needs, physical needs, financial needs. Oh, that's a blessing. Amen. 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 We are blessed to be a blessing and that is what we are doing as we are sowing remember this thing as we are sowing our seed as you are writing your checks if you are writing them write to covenant fusion if you are giving online go to covenantfusion.com just sow your seed and let God multiply us give him an opportunity to increase us amen it sounds very odd but give him an opportunity to bless you Give him an opportunity to give the desires of your heart. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you with our seed, Lord. What we have and what we don't have with everything. God, I can only do so much, but I am here to ask of you to give your best matching to this, Father. You promised us, so give, and it shall be given. Press it down, shaken together, running over, shall men put to your bosom. Lord, I release that upon all of my brothers and sisters as they are sowing that your law of multiplication will work, will work into their lives, Father. Open doors, Father, that no man can shut. Expecting greater opportunities, Father. Greater favor working in our lives that we will transform every single day and that we will prosper for your glory, God. That we may also be a blessing to many. Thank you for your kingdom purpose that is being fulfilled in our lives. Thank you for this seed multiplying in our lives. All for your glory and your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. And we bless you for giving us greater harvest. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let us get ready. Well, let us, first of all, I want to remind all the people that are out there, if you need prayer, please call our um, number at 407-490-4019. That's 407-490-4019. 
and get someone to come into an agreement with what your needs are. God knows already knows what they are, and he's just waiting for you to reach out to him, to pray and ask him, to cast your cares on him, to make your requests known to him, and just thank him with the thanksgiving every day after that, because he already has your prayer in his hand. So just call this prayer hotline, and we'll be glad to uh, come in agreement and pray for any the needs that you have and we welcome your phone calls and know that this is a church that God is blessing and we want to give blessings back to you through our prayers and our agreements in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us uh, read our Psalms 91. It is such an awesome covering for us especially in this day and we I can't imagine not having God in my life. I don't even want to try and think about it. But I am so thankful that we have his word that we can look at and know that he has our back all the time. Let us begin to read. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the air that flies in by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see more to the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no able nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, amen. amen yes. Now I want to remind you of our uh, Good Friday, which is coming up this coming Friday. Please come and join us. Um, at Covenant Fusion Church. We'd love to have you here. It's a, an awesome time on Good Friday to be spending with the Lord. And then come on Easter Sunday on April the 9th and join us. And afterwards, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt for the children. So bring your kids and plan to have fun. They love Easter egg hunts. And we uh, can't wait to see you here. God bless you all. Pastor Shree. Thank you. Thank you so much. We serve a great God. Is, amen? amen. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no matter how much I talk about him, I feel like I'm still not talking enough. That's the um, beauty with him, I believe, and I am so thankful that we serve. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. We ha we're having waving fun. <laughs> I know today is um, Palm Sunday. Um, it's, a, it's a very important day in the journey of the cross and an important day for us. It's nothing to do with the, the tradition of man or whatnot, even though, you know, not every tradition is on, in all reality is a bad thing. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's reminding ourselves what all has happened. I like to know that that story should stay relevant to us. If that, uh, uh, what has happened in the life of Jesus Christ, 
which means what has happened in your life, right? Jesus Christ's life is not for him to live. He lived for us. So for whatever incidents that, are, that took place in his life are valuable for us because every step of his way, it, it enabled us, it empowered us, it taught us something. It gave us something that would uh, help us live the best life that God has created for us. The title of my message today um, sounds a little depressing, but uh, I'm going to help explain as we go forth. The title is Enter Into Death. You know, uh, as a kid, uh, growing up, I, wa- I, I, I'm a ba- I mean, like any, any uh, boy probably will be, but uh, uh, I was a fan of Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee's movies. <laughs> and in there, there, was, there, there is this movie called Enter the Dragon. That was one of, the, one of his uh, biggest uh, hit movies. So I almost put something like that. But eh, I'm like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not Bruce Lee ambassador. I'm Christ ambassador. So I'm going to put the title differently, right? <laughs> but um, death is something, um, you know, you can travel through anything in your life. You can travel through anything in, li- in life. You know, I didn't plan for it to be like that, but it's a, it's a sad thing um, for me, in a way. My, my next door neighbor, um, just before the um, service started, just before we were leaving the house, he passed away. So uh, this is something um, different for me, in a way. A couple of hours ago, it was a different meaning, and now it's a totally different meaning. Uh, The man that I have seen and the man we we had discussions with and we did things is now not there. Um, What happened? Death. You know, it's one of those things that that, um, hits us so much and it, it is inevitable. Last night, for whatever uh, uh, reason, God has laid on my heart to go see his wife, who is in the nursing home. So I went there to see her. It almost felt like God was using me as, a, as an ambassador to let the husband express his love for his wife and the wife expressing her love back. In there, you know, the mother um, was, uh, she has some issues with her memory. Um, that's one of the reasons why she is there in the nursing home. She can't remember much. She can't remember anything and everything that is happening. But one thing truly encouraged me when I was talking to her, and uh, I was talking to her, and I said, pretty soon you and um, your husband is going to be able to dance in heaven and dance with Jesus. And she was like brightened up from year to year, and she was happy and thankful. And then she immediately made a statement, it is sad that people don't believe in heaven. Even in that state of mind that she is in, she's like, it's sad that people don't believe in heaven. It is sad that people don't believe in Jesus Christ. And that, that, that expression just just triggered me so much into some new level of appreciation of having faith in Jesus Christ. Which gives us an opportunity to continue life. And it was, it was so joy to, to be there and, and share some things that, that are good for them both. They were, they, they were I mean, like if, if they had the opportunity and if they had the bodies, they would dance now. That's how they were in love with each other. So um, ex- seeing that expression of love and, and, and seeing that flow through people, both of them, even though their minds are not fully there, or even though their yes and no's are not there, that love is still working for them. I was overwhelmed with that love. And I'm, I'm, I'm praying that I'm, I want us to capture a little bit of that into our life of how much the love of God is so real in your life. 
Even though Jesus may not be present with you physically, his love and the expression of his love is so real to us. That's why he says, even while you are sleeping, I am still watching over you. I'm still caring for you. In, in other words, even if we are not conscious of things, even if we don't feel like it is working in our way, it, 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 even if we don't feel like everything is together, it is together in His love. I'm encouraging every one of us, let us not forget to have faith in His love. I want to en encourage today, you know, why am I talking about death and I'm talking about love? Because every man on this earth faced death. Every person is supposed to have faced death. They all face death. But there is this one man out of this small land, Israel. Out of this, this group of people that always rebelled against God. Out of that subset, God chooses one man. God in person. He comes to that group. He comes to that subset. Facing what? Facing death. It would be great if he had, a, had faced the great things and all the other stuff. Oh, this is the king. From the beginning of his life, look at it. Look at his life. From the beginning of his life, there was no room for him to be born. Yet he didn't stop. What is an ideal condition? <laughs> the birth of Christ should explain to us, there is no such thing called ideal condition. The presence and the plan of God, that is the ideal condition for us. If the plan of God is well and active in our lives, your ideal. Your life is worth it. That's where you can boldly declare, life is worth the living. Because He lives. Amen? Amen. It is worth the living because he, you are so in the right place in the right time if you have Jesus. There is nothing right out of Jesus if you, as long as you're trying to fight to pursue him and wanting to do his will on this earth, that is your right place. Many of us, we are trying to have the circumstances tell you you are in the right place. Remember Jesus was in the storm? Was the storm a right place? Or Jesus made it the right place? So many of us, we forget death is the right place because Jesus went there. Just because he went there. You know, we are waiting for your feelings, for your emotions to tell you, oh, it is well. No, you don't want to wait for those to tell you. Let the word of God tell you. Let your faith tell you, not your feelings. Not the manifestations or not the circumstances. Don't let them tell you. Let your faith tell you. Zechariah 9th chapter. We, we, you know, we were, we've been studying about the prophecies or the prophets. And I know we already touched Zechariah in the past. But I want to go back again today because it is so relevant for today's uh, uh, topic being that it is his Palm Sunday. It is the Sunday before he was crucified. What happened there? Zechariah 9, 9, 10 says, Rejoice greatly. Rejoice greatly. This is, this is true for all of us. I don't know anything, you know. You know, we, I always had these friends around me. It doesn't matter what the reason are. They would always show up with alcohol. For them, any occasion is an occasion for party. It didn't matter when, when somebody died or it didn't matter when somebody was born. It didn't matter what has happened. Hey, there's a party. Let's go get drunk. I know you have a few of them. I know you have few of those people. I have, you know, we, we, we travel through the, those things no matter what happens. You know, they get drunk, they dance, no matter what happens. We find a way to do that. Can we not find a way to rejoice? 
If we can carry a car, uh, beer and be happy because there is some occasion there. You know, I was surprised when, 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 when people in the, in the United States are celebrating Cinco de Mayo. I'm like, what do you have to do with that? Amen. Then I realized they are carrying these, these beer cans with them. Then I realized, oh yeah, there's a reason. There's a reason. So if we have a reason, if we can find a reason to get drunk or get celebration or whatnot, why can't we find a reason to rejoice? Amen. That could be your keg you carry everywhere. You want some? Let me pour it out. Let me pour it out. I got this. You know, we carry everything. We ca carry sorrow. We carry burden. We carry suffering. We carry everything. Why can't we carry a keg of joy? Amen. Wherever we go, can we overflow with joy? Because you are rejoicing always. That's why it's a very powerful dispensation. It's a very powerful manifestation. You know, when you have the special goods, whenever you go for a party, they come to your booth because you have the special stuff. Imagine your life with this special stuff people are lacking. The joy of the Lord. Oh, the whole world needs that. The whole world is hungry for that. But only you can dispense that. Instead we have all these other tabs that are running. Have sorrow, the suffering, the pain. Everybody in the world has those. The special thing God, that God has given to us is joy. No matter what happens in our lives. No matter why, what is falling apart. We cannot be sad. Amen. You know, I'm not asking you to live like a robot. I'm not saying that. I'm asking you to live in the victory. Have the joy of the Lord every day. Rejoice. What day it is, it's a day for me to be joyful. Yes, like I said, just this morning, I have seen death right in front of me. Yet, I'm making a choice to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Why would you want to rejoice? Because the king is coming. Glory be to God in heaven. Maybe you are suffering. Maybe you are lacking. Maybe you are down. But I want you to know it doesn't Change the fact the king is coming. The king is coming. Come on church. The king is coming. Your king. Your king. My king is coming. It doesn't matter where you are going. The king is about to come. And when the king comes, he know he comes with the bushels. He pays all your debts. He frees you from all your pains. That's why he promises there shall not be no tear, no, no, no suffering, no hunger or no lack. It's worth celebrating that king. That's why I want to rejoice. If I am looking defeated, if I am looking sullen, if I am looking sad, I am allowing my enemy to win over me. But instead I am making a choice. I am going to rejoice, man. I am dirt broke, but you know what? I still can smile. <laughs> I got no penny, man. But I, you know what? I will rejoice. Because that's a spiritual action that you can continue with. You can boldly declare the king is coming. You can tell your soul, hey soul, it's okay. The king is coming. My king is coming. You can tell for yourself your life for, that is falling apart. Speak to your life, the king is coming. You know, that's why this Palm Sunday becomes so important. He entered. Why? Where did he enter? He entered into Jerusalem. You might see it as a victory. That is what the Bible, that is what most of the scholars says. The triumphing entry. The triumphant entry. You can, you can put it that way. But what he entered into is death. 
It is in Jerusalem he will be killed. It is in Jerusalem he will be abused. But he entered into it. He is just having, he is just and having salvation lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, a fall of a donkey. Look at that. He wasn't even worried about his ride. <laughs> he found his way. Because he needs you. You are more important for him than him. He didn't mind. Yes, the donkeys represent different things in different parts of the world, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going in there. But I want you to understand, lowly and riding on a donkey. The king in a lowly state. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea. And the rivers to the ends of the earth. That's the king we serve. That's the king. All hail King Jesus. All hail King Jesus. Hosanna. 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 We are talking to that king. We are talking about that king. Who has dominion from sea to sea. Now the same king is trying to say. Why is your face stricken? Shouldn't you be jo joyful. That I am coming. That was this Palm Sunday is all about. They celebrated him. They threw everything that they had. We, we're going to read it in a minute. They threw everything they had. They, they were putting themselves under him. Because the king is coming. You know why the king is coming? He's coming into your death. Entering into your death. He's the God of eternity. He doesn't need to die. He doesn't even need to taste death. But he knows that you are facing death. So he has to. He has to face the death. He knows you are suffering. That's why he has to go through suffering. You know, many times Jesus, when we look at Jesus, we look at him as a genie who takes away the suffering, who takes away the pain, who takes away the trouble. But I'm here to tell you, he's not going to take those things away. But instead, he helps you walk through them. He, they can have a hold over you because he, the king, has entered into death for you. A stopping point for all mankind. But he entered into it. And we all know in, in next Sunday we will be celebrating how he came out of it. But I want us to understand the king has gotten an invitation there to enter into his death. Luke chapter 19 starting at verse 28. And he had said this. He went on ahead going to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place where he is going to be crucified. He's going to die. He's going to Jerusalem and he says, And it came to pass when he drew near Bethphage and Bethany, Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples saying, Go into the village opposite you. Whereas you enter, you will find a cold tide, and on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you losing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. Do you know the Lord has a need of your life? Your lowly life. <laughs> Think about that, how much he wants to walk in, or in your life and ride in your life, ride over your life. He needs, the Lord has need of it. You might think hey, nobody needs it, nobody needs your life, nobody needs you. But the Lord has need of you. We think we need the Lord. The Lord says, no, 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 I need you. 
What a great God we have. Yet we cannot humble ourselves to say, I need you, Lord. We know on the bottom of it, we know very well, he doesn't really need me. You know, I think an evangelist put this one way. I like that example so much. And an, an elephant and an ant were crossing over a bridge in the forest. And as they were crossing over the bridge, the bridge shook. It was all just shaking and vibrating and all that. And they crossed over and the ant lifts up. And the ant looks at the lion, trying to give, looks at the elephant and tries to give a high five. And says, look, we shook the bridge. That's how we feel with God. Yet the elephant didn't say anything. He was happy. If the Lord is the elephant, you might be the ant. Nevertheless, he wants to walk with you. He wants to go with you. He wants to shake things for us. He wants to make things for us that he have made through. He lived through. He walked through. He wants us to go with him so he may know how to get you out of it. Because he is the only one who walked through it and came out of it. That is where my allegiance have come. I wouldn't bow to anybody but somebody who knows what they are saying. When it comes to that, Jesus has a whole lot to say that I don't know. And he not only says about it, he does it. He lives in it. He lives through it and gives us an opportunity to live the life that he has ordained for us. The Lord has a need of it. 32nd verse. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were losing, losing the, 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 the colt, the owners of it said to him, Why are you losing the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes. On the cold, and they set Jesus on him. Where are you setting Jesus? Maybe you think you are too busy that you have to fight this death all by yourself, but he has come to Jerusalem. He has come to his dwelling that he may travel through all this. Sometimes we, we, we put Jesus in a separate place. No, let me deal with my trouble. God, when all is well, let me talk back to you. But he is instead is like, no, no, no. Can you get me in? I want to ride this ride with you. I want to ride this ride for you. I want to deal with you in this. So those who were sent went their way, found it, and they brought it back. The Lord, they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes and set Jesus on him. As he went, many spread their clothes on the road. I think that is one of the most important things that you and me need to understand. The clothes represents the dirt. The clothes represents their life. The clothes represents their identity. The clothes represents who they are in the society. Everything was brought under his feet. Trample over them, God. When was the last time you asked God to let my reputation go so I may have your reputation? My honor, my dignity, my identity, can I throw them at, at, at him so he may have his way? The, because he is walking into his death. Give him the grand welcome. Palm Sunday is all about welcoming him. Welcoming him. How much we are not ready to welcome him. Because we are holding too much to ourselves. This is a death that God is trying to explain to us. A death that is not a death. But the death that transforms into a resurrection. First of its kind. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount Olives. The, the whole multitude of, this, of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they have seen. 
saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Baruch Haba Besham Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. The king is not coming in his own, own name. He, ha he is coming into our lives. He has come into our lives with that name. With a name in the name of the Lord. Everybody is looking. This is how Jerusalem will be saved. They will be declaring the same phrase. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is what is fixing to happen in Israel. That is what is going to happen. Everybody, every Jew will be declaring this. That blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king. He they acknowledge this is Jesus my king. All the world will be acknowledging that Jesus my king. I am asking you to acknowledge that Jesus your king. Declare and praise him and worship him as the king has come into your life. Why would you lack? Okay. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. I so love that phrase. Probably the only phrase in, in Hebrew that I know maybe. Baruch Haba Beisham Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd. Teacher rebuke your disciples. There is always that group. There is always that group who tries to tell you to shut up. There is always that group who tries to say, Oh, that's not the proper way to worship God. Oh, you're doing awful things. You're doing things that are not right. You're doing this. You're doing that. Guess what? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is what our life ought to be. There is a part of our life always tries to reject God. Always tries to tell you that you are not following God rightly. You're not doing it all right, all, all sensible. I'm here to tell you, throw yourself down. And that is the best thing you can give. Break yourself. Let yourself loose that you may be found in him. Lord, I don't know what I am doing. I don't have a clue. But I am here to worship you, Lord. I'm here to invite you, King. Come reign in my life. I, I don't know all these things. I don't know the theology. I can't go to the seminary. I can't even live with myself. But you know what? Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. I invite you, Hosanna. Hosanna my king. Hosanna my king. Come. But he answered and said to them. That's. I mean. Jesus is the best. At smacking people at their own words. Jesus knows how. You know. Sarcasm. He's the number one person. If you ever want to. If you want to get around him. He is the best to tell you. Like nicely. But you don't even know you just got slapped. <laughs> he says, he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. He's trying to tell us something. This cannot be stopped. What can't be stopped? The Lord's manifestation in your life cannot be stopped. His will in your life cannot be stopped. As long as you are willing to throw your garments at his feet. Lord come in. Be the king of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Reign over my life. What, are they, what is he being invited to? Like I said. He is not even being invited to give him a throne. But he is being invited to come into death. That invitation was not for him to be crowned as the king of kings. Yes it is, but not the way everybody thinks. He's being welcomed into death. 
The same guy who looked at Lazarus tomb and who said, uh, uh, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth. The same guy is now being invited into death. Not the death that is outside, death that is inside. So he, may, he will know how personal he is to you. He is not able to come into your death because you haven't invited. He is not able to come into that end that you created as a dead end. That, that he is not able to come there. I want you to know something here. Invite him. He joyfully entered, knowing that he will be crucified here. He was excited. Let me get in. Let me get in. And I'm here to also encourage every one of us. Death is something that knocks on our door, that is always trying to surround us. I'm not talking about the death that, that when you leave your body, that is not the only death. There is a death that every day is trying to swoop our lives. That is trying to invade our lives. In that death is where he truly wants to be. And in that, in that death you truly should be. Because you have been given the keys to it. Keys. So you may turn it around. That you may not let the Hades be Hades. Let the hell go to hell in a handbasket. No. When the hell comes your way. You have the keys to transform. When the death is coming into your life. You have the power to turn it around. That's why you need to welcome Jesus into your death. This is not a death that gives an end. This is a death that brings resurrection. I think we are missing our biggest opportunities because we have not invited him there. He's not able to enter in there because we are not able to give him that best opportunity. John 12, 20 and 26 reads, 20 reads like this. Now there were a certain Greeks among those who came, to, came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip who was from Bethsaida of Galilee and asked him saying sir we wish to see Jesus Philip came and told Andrew and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus and and Jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified that the son of man should be glorified but what is he signing up for for death. You want to see the glory of God? It is coming through death. Don't ignore that. Don't ignore the pain. Don't ignore the suffering. Don't ignore the lack. That is exactly where you will see the glory of God. Right here, right wherever you are. This is the right place for you to see the glory of God. When your own body is not trying to support you. That's the same place where you will see the glory of God. I will see the glory of God. This is where we are. We are here to see the glory of God. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Can you prophesy that over your life? The hour has come into your life that the Son of Man may be glorified. Because you are willing to let Him turn your death, death into resurrection. You are willing to turn, let, let Him turn your mess into message. You're willing to let him turn things around for you. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain, wheat, grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. What is the Lord inviting us here? He is inviting himself into a death of multiplication. That he may become first among the brethren. 
first among the resurrected. That is, that was his death that he has entered in. And that's why he is asking us to walk into this thing so he may multiply and change the course of it. The wheat seed would have died alone. It would have been of no value if it didn't die. The Lord is willing to transform our life into such a way that it becomes more meaningful. That it becomes more of a value. More of what it should be. But you are not willing to die. Because our flesh, our will, our plans have more precedence than the plan of God. Than the will of our Father. You know, we, we, we have the saying, never give up, never surrender. I agree with you, but you're giving up. You're, you're not giving up. You know, that mindset of not giving up is good. But as long as it is in Christ. Oftentimes, it is your giving up that is going to give you the biggest victory. Because you gave up for Christ. You lost it for Christ. You lost it for Him. You're willing to lose it for Him again and again. I'm willing to lose it for Him again and again and again. Not my will, but Thy will be done. Not my plan, but Your plan, Father. Not what I want to do, but You. Give me that. Give me that freedom to do Your will. So He clearly explains, unless you die, it remains alone. He didn't want to remain alone. Look at that. Look at that. Jesus didn't want to live, live alone. Oh, I'm going to live in my palace. No, no, no. I want you to come with me. What a big brother. What a big brother we have. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going there. I want you to come. I am going to my father to prepare a mansion, prepare a house for you. Not for himself. He, he, his plan is always with us. As much as we want us to be with him. He's like, no, no, no. I want to be with you. But if he dies, it produces much grain. He who loves, this is the most quintessential and essential Christian life. He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. That's the death he's asking us to enter in. Enter into this death with me. Where the world cannot have any hold over you but myself. I'm the only one who wants to have a, 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 a life for you. The eternal life. You know, the, I'm going to read this again. He who loves his life will lose it. This is where many of us are experiencing a loss in our life. Because you try to keep. You try to hold it back. You try to hold it. You try to, you, you try to not lose it. Not give up. The things that you should be giving up, you don't want to give up. The things you shouldn't be giving up, you're willing to give up. This morning my prayer is that the things will change for us. We won't give up on Christ, but we will give up on ourselves. I'm okay with less of me. I'm okay without my anger. I'm okay without my, 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 my perception. I'm okay without my education. I'm okay without my, 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 my suffering, without my, my, my addiction, without my, my temptation. I'm okay. I'm going to give it all up. I'm going to let that die. I'm going to enter into that death. As Christ have entered into that death for me, I will also enter into this death for Christ. Amen. That is where the two things are meeting. That is where the reaction is happening. That is where the fusion, the covenant fusion is where, that is where it is happening. Where he is dying, I am dying too. He is dying for me and I am dying for him. Glory be to God in heaven. This is not a death of flesh and blood. This is a death of my will. 
death of my plan, my life. I'm going to lose it so I may be found in him. That is the best exchange we can walk into. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. What a glorious opportunity. Have you ever seen Jesus being stopped? There was nothing that was able to stop him. No lack, no poverty, no sickness, no doubt, no fear, no shame, no death couldn't stop him. Where he is, he will also be. Glory be to God in heaven. Where he is and you will also be. That is the, that is the death he is asking us to come into. Come into that death, man. There's a party. There's a party in there. Come, let us dance together right there. Come have fun right there. So we may all have the joy. My servant will, all, will be also. If anyone serves me. Him my father will honor. Glory be to God in heaven. Amen. He is such a wonderful, wonderful God. I think I'm getting ready to close my service. I, wanna, I want us to remember what all ha is coming out of this. What he has invited us. What he has been invited into. He accepted that invitation. He accepted that invitation. Amen. Amen. So I'm asking you. Would you accept his invitation? <coughs> he accepted the invitation. When, he, when everybody called him. Hail. Hail king. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were inviting him. Whether they knew it or not. They invited him to his death. An invitation in Jerusalem means death. He knows that. He knows and he, he signed up for it and he lived for it. I even like that song. That's why the beautiful. He lived to die. He lived to die. If you are living to keep, you will lose. And if you are willing to let it go, and die then you will live that's why he clearly clearly I want to I, I can't get over this verse all the time I love to experience that the more I can lose myself where he says he who loves his life will lose it and he who hates his life in this world not I'm not asking you to hate your life the life in this world the life that this world is offering to us. That's the life. You don't want to keep it. Instead you lose it. What you lose, you will find. That is most of our problems. Many times we don't want to lose it. When we lose, we will also find. He who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. I just want to I just want to encourage lastly yeah, I want to encourage I want to end this with this encourage, en encouraging prophecy from same Je Zechariah as a prophecy that he prophesied because we are studying these these prophets and the and the prophecies that they have prophesied I know I want you to know all the time I know God wants us to know there is a prophecy that has been prophesied over our life Jesus prophesied that life over us. Zechariah 10, 1 through 2 says this. Ask the Lord for the rain. In the time of the later rain, the Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. Glory be to God in heaven. For everyone, that is a rejoicing prophecy. We are going to rejoice in it because we are asking the Lord for his later rain. What are we asking for right now? Lord, let your later rain come upon us. 
there was a former rain that you have rained over the church now we want the later rain father let it come upon us let the spirit of the lord fall upon us let your rain fall upon us you know he promises in the time of later rain the lord will make flashing clouds they will just flash out of nowhere you may be expecting for perfect conditions he says no 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 i'm going to make them happen in a flash the time of gradual increase is over the time for flash in a twinkling of an eye in a flash god is getting ready to change things in my life that is the prophecy i love for you to prophesy over your life the flashing clouds are mine come on church the flashing clouds are mine we are all waiting for that cloud we are know it it may come tomorrow it may come 10 days later or 10 years later but god is saying now is the time for you to pray for the flashing cloud now is the time now is the time for that flashing cloud to come upon you come upon your children come upon your lives for the idol speak delusion the diviners envision lies and tell false dreams they comfort in in vain therefore the people when their way like sheep they they are in trouble because there is no shepherd but for you and me the lord is my shepherd come on It's a glorious day. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Yeah. I shall not want because his rain is upon me. His flashing clouds are upon me. There shall not be a lack in my life. I prophesy that not because everything is working well, but because he said it. Yes. I will rejoice in his flashing clouds. I will rejoice in the showers of rain. If you are bold enough, declare that he has dumped them on me already. The, the the showers of later rain is not going to come. It has come on me. You are appropriating the time. Jesus, you know, that is why I love to learn a lot from Mary. He looked into her face and said, "Woman, it's not not my time yet." Woman, it's not my time yet. I can see myself saying that to my mother and slapping myself to to you don't know what where. She would take her shoe off and slap me if I call her woman. But Jesus said that to her, "Woman, my time has not come." She didn't even get offended by it. She didn't even bother. She just walks by and says, "Do whatever he says." That's totally mother, you know. She just walks by. He she walks and says, "Do what he says." The time got appropriated by Mary's faith. The time has begun not because Jesus began the time but the woman has begun because the God doesn't operate in time you do So start the time by appropriating it the clouds are on me you are appropriating the time the later rain is upon me you are appropriating the time you're being like Mary I'm going to have that Jesus said it I'm going to have it now. I'm going to have it now. I'm going to have it now. It's on me right now. It's on me. It's around me. It's in me. You know, this is where you are becoming the prophets of your life. This is where you are declaring the prophecy of the Lord all around you and you are speaking life to those death dead bones. And they will all come to life. You know why? Jesus paid it all. That's why he paid for every single thing. 
You're not appropriating a borrowed stuff. You're appropriating a paid stuff. Somebody paid for y'all in full. It is time that we celebrate that Jesus paid it all. Glory be to God in heaven. It just gets me excited. It's hard for me to contain. I don't want to dance here and you fall. <laughs> because Jesus paid it all. I want to see more glory in my life. Amen. Amen. Because he paid for my glory. He paid for my resurrection. He paid for me to be well. He paid. He paid. He is willing to walk with our death. He is also asking, walk with me in this death. So you may see the same resurrection I have seen. Christian don't know how to operate in resurrection. I'm calling you Christian. I'm calling you believer. Can we operate in this resurrection? We are so struggling and so wanting to not die. But Jesus says die once. I'll show you how to multiply. Die once so I may show you what is truly the resurrection power. Give it all to him since he paid it all. Glory be to God in heaven. There cannot be a triumph without facing the enemy. The ultimate enemy being the death. I just want to repeat this scripture again. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Jesus. I don't know. I, I, I have that to speak again. Baruch Haba. Besham Adonai. Baruch Abba Besham Adonai. Let the God of heaven, the El Shaddai, the Adonai, let him flow with you. Let him walk you in his blessing because he is the blessed king. An invitation to death leads to multiplication. Ha! What a reverse theory. The world says when you die you're dead. But Jesus says when you die you live. That's the power that we celebrate. Whatever we are willing to let go defines the outcome of your life. It's not what you are going to keep. What you are willing to let go. Whatever we are willing to let go Enough of my pride. Enough of my bitterness. Enough of my ignorance. Enough of my hatred. Enough of self-rejection. Some of you need to be repented of self-rejection. What God has not rejected, you don't have the right to reject. Maybe the builders have rejected you, that's okay. He himself calls the stone that the builders have rejected have become the chief cornerstone. Because the Lord needs you. Can you just have a wonderful smile in your heart and look to your neighbor and say, the Lord needs you. 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 Glory be to God in heaven. The Lord needs us. That is where we are going. That is where we are tra traveling. Into his need. Into not you thought it is your need. But he says no, no, no. I need you. Invite him into your needs. So he may have his needs met. His, his need is to bless you. His need is to multiply you. His need is to resurrect you. Whatever we are willing to let go defines the outcome of your life. Amen. Just all let us come into this prayer and think about this. Jesus have paid it all. Amen. All right. Amen, church. Let's stand up this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to lift our voices. We're going to lift up the piano volume Thank a little you, bit. Thank you, Jesus. To hear what the Savior has to say today to us. 
even though our strength might be small, we find in him our all in all. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you paid it all for us. Amen. And all to you we owe.